Hi everyone, my name is Anna Cheng. I'm a contemporary artist. Hi, my name is Wan Qing and I'm a medical oncologist at National University Hospital. Uh, my name is uh, Kabin, my surname is Lim. I'm now 67 years old and I'm an uh, associate professor in the University of Singapore. My name is Timothy. I'm a consultant radiation oncologist with the National University Cancer Institute, Singapore. Hello, my name is Joshua. I'm a consultant with uh, otolaryngology and neck surgery. Yeah, my name is Dave Chow. I'm 56 this year. My occupation is a logistics and document control manager. I was diagnosed with uh, nasopharyngeal cancer, a very long name. In short, it's NPC, back in August 2002. Uh, I was a smoker for 50 years, so I had to do cleaning and descaling on my teeth regularly. And during one of these visits to the dentist, uh, she told me that there was a growth under my, my tongue. And uh, immediately, immediately he, she recommended uh, recommended me to see a surgical oncologist and who did a biopsy and also a MRI on the growth and unfortunately they found it to be they found it to be invasive or cancerous. Um, I was a full-time caregiver to my husband Henry Ching when he was um, going through his treatment in NUH. Today he's uh, He's now four years into his remission as a MPC Stage 4A warrior. In September 2015, Henry felt an unusual sensation in his left cheek. Since Henry was always very healthy and he had no family history of um, cancer, we were very surprised when the ENT specialist found a, a large tumour behind his nose. And um, one week later, the ENT specialist announced the unfortunate news that Henry is suffering from nasopharyngeal cancer. The treatment I went through was radiotherapy, or in short, we call RT. Those days, the RT treatment was uh, more or less a full blast to your tumor position. And there wasn't a, a 3D imaging effect to see where exactly your tumour is. So it's full strength, uh, target at the tumour, but of course it's not localised because of lack of 3D imaging. So there are a lot of side effects. And I also signed on for a trial, which is twice a day radiation in the last three weeks of the six-week treatment, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. So my first reaction after this was, I was scared because, as you know, I teach in the, in the, in the university. Cutting part of my, my tongue away means I, I asked myself whether I'll be, I'll be able to speak again. Okay? And uh, he, he told me no, but I think maybe he's trying to calm my nerves. During the initial treatment, the consultant told Henry that due to the size of this um, 4CM tumour, he is suffering from stage 4 MPC. Fortunately, um, a friend of ours actually made an appointment for us to have a second opinion um, to see Prof Lo. Prof Lo is a very unassuming and very friendly doctor. He advised us that actually we should not predict the size of the tumour because it, it is actually not a flat blob or a lesion, it is 3D. He told us what is more critical for us is to, um, for us to actually know whether he could treat Henry whether the, the cancer is treatable. And he actually told us that um, he is able to treat Henry. I mean, he was able to treat Henry, barring no other major health issues. On March 30th, Prof Lo announced the good news that the cancer did not spread to the other parts of his body, except for the base of his 
um, the base of the brain as posited by him. But again, he reassured us that there were patients who have similar conditions that actually survived the remission for more than three to five years. That same day, we met up with the oncolo medical oncologist, another very reassuring, kind and uh, kind of helpful doctor. He told us that um, because of the size of the tumour, he would administer three cycles of chemotherapy comprising of nine infusions. And thereafter, it will be another, followed by another seven rounds of, of chemo and 33 sessions of our radiotherapy. He also offered us the, a choice of um, clinical trial. Henry took up the offer because he felt that at his age, it is good that he will be able to um, help future patients. The trial drug was specially tailored to Henry, for Henry according to his physical makeup, like height and weight. Before each treatment, actually Henry had to see Prof Lo for biopsy and endoscopy to check on his response to the drug. After the nine weeks of chemotherapy, Henry had to go through another MRI so that um, the oncologist could tailor a soft shell mask and also for the IRT calibration. Thank God, the MRI showed no trace of the tumour. Nonetheless, just to play safe, Henry went through the complete treatment as prescribed. So after the radiation, right, the, the slivery gland are dead permanently, the left and right gland. I only have a small gland beneath my tongue. So I got about 10%, 20% saliva. So most of the time, my mouth is very dry. So I have to drink water or I use the, the gel. And the gel is to protect the teeth because after radiation, especially those days, it's maximum strength. So the, the teeth texture has also changed a lot. So the teeth now get decay faster than before. Yeah, so have to be really protect the teeth. So that's two side effects. The third side effect is <coughs> the taste wise, right? has gone down about 30%. So when I taste something very salty, actually to a normal person, it's, it's a normal, right? So, and so the taste has gone down. The hearing also has gone down. So sometimes when I talk, I cannot hear myself, I raise my voice. And when I raise my voice, uh, my wife will say, why are you shouting? <laughs> Even until today, he complained that, why are you shouting? But actually, it's like, I can't hear myself, so I need to raise. So the hearing is affected and also the smell is affected because the radiation is this area, right? So everything this area, uh, the cells are like, like dead and some of the cells cannot be recovered. Even they can recover, it's like, it's not fully functioning. So that's why. Okay, then the next thing is a lot of mucus. 18 years, even until today, right? If I go to the toilet sometimes, it's not because I need to let go, but I need to let go here because a lot of mucus here. So that's the reason, right? But, uh, and the mucus over the years is uh, sometimes get thickened, very thick, and it has color also. Even though I feel good, I'm not affected, or I'm not, I'm not falling sick, but I have color in my mucus, right? So these are all the, the bad cells are inside the, the sinus area, right? And there's no recovery on this side effect. You just have to live with it. Okay, the other thing is the pain in my neck. I think this part is because of the nerve got hit. So when I uh, see the doctor, the doctor will say, yeah, this part and puzzle of side effect. So especially when I, I exercise and I'm really tired uh, in the night, then I feel a sharp pain here, then I just lie down and let it rest. And the next morning, I'm okay. So just live with it. Then the other thing on my nerve is, if you notice, my mouth is like this, sunken and my wife, my wife always very jealous of me. Hey, why is your mouth, why is your face like that? <laughs> uh, because uh, the radiation hit the nerve here. So this muscle here has shrunken. And also you not notice my neck also like this, sunken in. So all these are never, I, I can't put on weight here. That's the reason, and you will get worse. Yeah. 
So just live every day happily and don't think so much. Yeah. <coughs> then, okay, there are more side effects. I feel tired more than before now. One of the reasons is because there's this gland at the beneath the brain. It was also hit by the ray. So that has changed. So uh, I feel tired more easily. And also due to my thyroid. My thyroid also got affected. So I now take the thyroxin because there's this hormone in my body that's very high. Because the thyroxin is not functioning well. So I need to take this for the throughout my life. Uh. So that helps me to manage my tiredness and also cold. So in a normal room temperature, 33, 24 degrees, I feel colder than before. Yeah. So these are the hormonal change in my body that is affected by the radio, radiotherapy treatment. The other important side effect uh, is, the, is the mouth and the neck muscle. Over time, because of the radiation, especially so long ago, was maximum strength, the muscle will harden. Some of, them some of them become long-term and part of, some of them are still with me. For example, dry mouth. Uh, dry mouth and uh, I have to learn how, learn how to speak. Okay, and uh, that's why I have to carry, carry the moisturizer everywhere I go to lubricate my mouth every time when, when I'm unable to articulate properly and also the stiff neck. I'm, a, I'm basically a teacher. So, the out of the three inconvenience, two of them affect me, uh, affect me uh, deeply. The, the ability to speak clearly with extra effort and secondly, the dry mouth. Another very big inconvenience is, you may not know, I, I will sometimes just lose my voice. I, my mouth is moving but no, nothing comes from my throat. And these are the effects of this, uh, of this oper operation. Uh, these are basically the adjustments I have to make. And of course, a lot of rest. I knew that at that time I couldn't talk. So the first thing I did at that time was, I, because of the nature of my work, I had to speak clearly for long hours. And the first, the first thing I did after I was discharged from the hospital was to, uh, to, to, uh, to attend very regularly the session with a speech therapist so that I can learn how to speak, or we learn how to speak fast because of, because of my work. And during this learning, it was very interesting that I found that, that I started to learn that we can never speak clearly with our tongue outside our teeth. You don't really try it, okay? And I also have to learn how, uh, so when I talk, I have to suck in my, my tongue behind my teeth. And secondly, I must know how to direct the tongue in the right position in the mouth and to curve in a certain curvature to speak clearly. So these are the long side effects. I'm still, I'm still doing this. Okay, so, well, I suppose that after, after this can, cancer operation, I told myself anyway, I will not be the same. Okay, so I have to change to adapt to this new situation. I have to apply the moisturizing gel in my mouth before I speak, because that is supposed to last for seven hours. And in between, whenever, whenever I speak, uh, and I get the dry throat, dry throat, I have to spray a uh, moisturizing gel and in between time I drink a lot of water to duplicate my mouth because trust me, if you, if you, if you, after you relearn the new way of speaking with effort, your mouth get dry faster. So, uh, just now I took some time to apply the gel, the oral gel. Okay, this, this oral gel mimics our saliva moist the mouth as well as uh, protect the teeth. So this exercise of the face and neck is very important, which I do twice a day. I also recorded a video in the YouTube, and now this YouTube video is shared everywhere, just to educate people that it's important to exercise your, your mouth and neck muscle so that it will not harden over time. Once it hardens over time, you cannot open your mouth and it's irreversible, right? And then once your neck muscle hard all the time, you cannot turn your neck. So this set of exercise is very important, and uh, the, especially new patient, you have to do it, and 
and do it every day, twice, at least twice a day for five, ten minutes. It came as a shock to us. We actually could not believe that, but um, it, it just came as though that, you know, we just heard a very cruel verdict that Henry is um, a verdict of um, a life sentence for Henry. It wasn't easy for me as a caregiver as well. Apart from from the juicing and all that, it was a real strain on me, physically, and psychologically, it affected me just as badly. At that time, my sole refuge was on God. It, I, I depended and rested in Him. And um, I would, often days, I would pour my sorrows and fears to Him in silent tears. From the day of the uh, diagnosis, for nine months, actually, I, I was frantically researching and reading up on how, and how I can help Henry break out the treatment. Actually, every day, his breakfast is four mugs of um, vegetable juices and one mug of fruit juice. And thereafter, he will have um, his um, breakfast of a bowl of oats, an hour after the juices. And his meals are usually very healthy meals that I home cook myself. They are usually more of a softer diet on fish, meat, vegetables, and concoction of soup that I prepare for him. And um, in between the day, I also had to pr prepare um, fluids like green bean water, coconut water, as well as the um, sour salt leaves water that I boil for him. Actually, in total, Henry will consume about two and a half to three litres of fluids a day. On days of his chemo sessions, I would send Henry to, to the hospital and then rush back to prepare his juices and also cook a light lunch for him. And then I will hurry back to the hospital again. Personally, I feel that the juices have helped Henry to shield him from the onslaught of the 33 rounds of radiation. Because apart from two ulcers and the loss of saliva towards the end of the week, Henry was um, very well and um, in fact he was playing tennis like five times a week throughout his treatment until the last week of his treatment. To prepare Henry for the radiation, I make sure Henry applied the 100% aloe vera gel, the moisturizing and healing cream as well as the vitamin E oil. This definitely helped Henry because um, even after the treatment, there were no signs of the... Um, Henry's neck was neither black or red, and he was still feeling very well. Although physically, Henry appeared to have avoided the, most of the um, adverse side effects. As I said earlier, the acceptance is important. Once you accept it, then you have to tell yourself, how do I transform myself to like another individual, right? As I mentioned earlier, my first life was lived in a certain way. Now I recover and have a chance to live a second life. Shouldn't I live the second life better than the first? The answer is yes. So because of that, I have to transform the mindset. So if you have a positive mindset and changing from lifestyle to diet to having more exercises, right? eating healthier food and manage your stress, right? And telling yourself, always be happy, no worry, you know? So with this kind of mindset and, and right attitude moving forward, it's easier to manage the side effect, right? Because we have to understand the side effect will not go away, all right? And because it never go away, sir, the more you have to ensure that for the long-term survivability and, and betterment for the future, you have to transform yourself, right? So what I do every day is just be happy and try to let go whatever baggage I have in my mind, right? And of course, I take a very healthy breakfast. My breakfast is what I call the Dave Super Breakfast. Sweet potato, carrot and tomato. Just steam and eat, right? And the sweet potato takes the skin because the skin has very high fiber content. And why sweet potato is good? Because 
sweet potato, tomato, and carrot, all these are very high antioxidant, right? All these are natural uh, nutrients to ensure that your immune system can be maintained at the highest, right? So with the right attitude and be happy, your immune system will always be, be there to help yourself to fight on this cancer to ensure that the relapse will never come back, right? So besides the mindset and changing your lifestyle, it's about learning from other people. That's why joining the support group is very important. Because support group, like I'm 18 years old, there are people 20, uh, 26 years old, right? Eight years old ahead of me. So I learned from him on how to cope. Of course, everybody's management of side effects can be different. But some of these generally are quite similar. Like if I have dry mouth, I use the oral gel, right? Joining through a support group not only help you psychologically, emotionally, it also helps you economically, right? So it's a lot of advantage to join a support group because you can learn from each other, right? And then we encourage each other, motivate each other to move the journey together. Hand in hand, you're never alone. Yes, definitely. Uh, the technology has advanced so much that nowadays treatment is very targeted. There's 3D, 3D imaging, they know exactly where the tumour is, so they will whack the tumour when they see the tumour, I mean the machine. Otherwise, they will hold back, it's like Tai Chi like that. So that's why today, the side effect is much lesser than my time, uh, 18 years back, 20 years back. Uh, so I'm very happy to see that, yeah. But when I share the journey with them, I always tell them that you have to assume the worst because uh, yeah, because the side effect to everyone is different because our body is different. So our body, the way we react to a side, side effect is different. I'd like to thank Mr. Dave for sharing his story with us. He has been a nasal pharyngeal cancer survivor for 18 years. While nasal pharyngeal cancer generally responds well to treatment such as chemotherapy and radiotherapy, the main reason for his excellent prognosis was that it was diagnosed at an early stage and he went on to complete his treatment. As the Chinese saying goes, 病熊前中医, which means that it's always best to treat a disease when it's in the early stage. It's important that we do not ignore symptoms of nasal pharyngeal cancer, such as a neck lump, which is often painless, blocked nose, nose bleed, hearing impairment, or ringing in the ear. If someone you know has such symptoms, you should advise him or her to seek medical consult early. Mr. Dave has also shared with us the long-term side effects that he received from his treatment. Firstly, he has dry mouth, which is probably the most common side effect among patients who have received radiotherapy. But like what he shared as well, this can be easily managed with diet modification, frequent water intake, and the use of moisturizing mouthwash or mouth gel. Secondly, over time, the skin and muscle around the neck and the mouth would heighten and cause neck stiffness and difficulty in swallowing. This side effect cannot be prevented, but it can be easily mitigated with the restretching, swallowing exercises, and diet modification. Thirdly, he has hearing difficulty, which can even worsen over time. The ENT, or ear, nose, and throat doctor, will help to assess the cause of the hearing impairment and recommend the most suitable treatment. This treatment may be in the form of a small operation to insert a tiny tube into the ear to drain fluid, or maybe a hearing aid to increase the volume of sound. With improvement in technology, there are now applications that can be downloaded on handphones to help people with hearing difficulty. Fourthly, he has low thyroid hormone, and sometimes patients may have inadequate production of other hormones as well. This is because the glands that produce these hormones are located in the head and neck region and they were hence affected by radiotherapy. Your doctor will monitor your thyroid hormone level or subsequent checkups and if found to be insufficient, they will prescribe medications to replace it. Lastly, a less common side effect is osteoradionecrosis 
or bone death of the lower jaw, which may lead to pain or infection. It can be prevented by maintaining good dental hygiene and patients are recommended to go for a dental review on a regular basis, six monthly at least. The good news is now with technological advances over the years, we now have better radiotherapy techniques such as Intensity Modulated Radiation Therapy or IMRT for short. It delivers precise radiation doses to the cancer, minimizing the dose to the surrounding healthy structures. This causes fewer side effects as compared to the conventional radiotherapy technique. We acknowledge that battling cancer is not an easy fit, but with a positive mindset and support from the doctors, family and friends, and even support group, you will be able to overcome cancer and the treatment side effects, just like what Mr. Dave did. To get NUS paid for my medical expenses, I, get, I got to let my boss know. Now, but seriously, to, to, to go back to work or not, the most important thing the university asked me is, only when, if I'm able to, to speak clearly for a length of time and able to interact with the student, then, I, then I'll be allowed to, to go back to work. Other than that, if I cannot speak properly, I will have to concentrate my work only on research activity, no teaching. But I think NUS has been very nice to me to give me this kind of flexi uh, flexibility. But this I can only speak from my point of view because it depends a lot on the kind of cancer that a person gets. Now for me, and if you ask me whether if, can I go back to work meaningfully, is it? Yeah, I think, I think it's yes. For me, it's yes because um, it, it, it's more, more, more of my character. I think the reason we, we should always fight our way to, to meet a new challenge. However, due, due to the multiple change, due to the multiple change, we have to have, we have, to have a very good uh, mindset as I'm not going to be the same limb cabin I was before. So the key, the key, to, the key to go back to work is a keyword adaptation. The adaptation is very important to, to adapt to a new limb cabin, but not the old one anymore. Okay? Now, one jokingly, I can tell you that I love singing, but now I can't sing. Okay? Okay. Second thing is, now, the other thing, the other mindset we must have is, personally, I hate when I'm in the situation of unknown. So to me, I want to be always in a no. Why? Why is it so? I'll tell you later. But after having my, my this cancer problems, I start to find out the medical the medical basis of this. Why I get this? Well, smoking for me. Why I get this? And what causes this? And uh, what kind of treatment? What kind of uh, changes in life? And all this. I found out everything because this, the, all these factors, when you put them together in a meaningful, cohesive whole, you will help me to set up a, a plan to, uh, to, to, which will facilitate my adaptation to a new life of me. But lastly, I think the more I share with people, the more I feel, I, I feel that cancer doesn't affect me anymore. And I think uh, in a self-help group that I'm in, it's a, very, it's a very useful thing to have because from there we advise, uh, to be advised, and also we share resources. We seldom share sorrow, but we share the feeling. And I think, I think human beings, other than material part of us, the moral part is very important because that the, the high, people with high spirit will fight the disease be, uh, better. And last message I have to have to, to you and the comment is, if you are a smoker, stop smoking. I was a smoker, and please don't do, please don't go into the same thing that I have I had to go through so painfully before. Thank you. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma, the most common type of head and neck cancer seen locally, commonly affects patients in their 40s to 60s. Many of them were still working prior to their cancer diagnosis, and after cancer treatment will go into remission. They have many productive years ahead of them to contribute to society. Now, other types of head and neck cancer tends to affect older people, commonly in their 60s or 70s. Some of them may already be retired or close to retirement. 
For them, the goal of treatment is to get the cancer under control so that they can return to life with their social groups and family. Head and neck cancers occur in a region of the body that affects important functions like eating, talking, breathing and hearing. Patients who have cancer of the tongue or voice box, we call that the larynx, may have speech affected by the disease or its treatment. Some may be mildly affected, requiring a short period of adjustment before making a good recovery. Others may need a longer period of voice rehabilitation. Cancers affecting the throat may affect swallowing. Most patients may need to adjust the diet temporarily to softer diets. Some may need a temporary feeding tube, but most patients will return to some form of oral feeding eventually. Hearing can sometimes be affected by treatment, either radiotherapy for nasopharyngeal carcinoma or chemotherapy for other head and neck cancers. Most will be mild and people around may not be aware. Perhaps the patient may miss a few words from time to time, but it's perceptible to the patient. They may be able to compensate by straining or focusing hard to hear, especially in a noisy environment. Only a minority of patients will have significant hearing loss for which hearing aids are required. Cancer treatments can be taxing on the body and cancer survivors will need a period of rest after completion of treatment for recovery. This period may differ between patients depending on their physical condition and the type of treatment they received. How ready they are to return to work may be dependent on the nature of their work. Doctors will assess patients regularly and give advice and sometimes MC or memos to employers for this reason. I hope employers can extend kindness and understanding to some of these patients who may take a longer time for recovery and eventually many will return and contribute to the company. Some patients may have specific issues that can be overcome with simple adjustments at the workplace. For instance, I had a patient who is a telephone receptionist. After MPC treatment, her hearing was mildly affected such that she struggled to hear telephone conversations because of the ambient noise. Employers provided headphones in place of the normal headsets for her and she is now able to carry out her duties as before. When cancer survivors return to work, they may be very conscious of how their colleagues perceive them. This may be due to concerns about productivity at work or their social interactions. Some patients may eat out less due to medical reasons. Others may be consciously adopting a healthier diet. This does not mean that they are less sociable. Most cancer patients still want to connect with colleagues just like others at the workplace. My message to employers is this. Head and neck cancer patients can still meaningfully contribute to the workplace after treatment. Please do not write them off. However, do understand that they may take time to recover and they need adjustments at work. Many will continue to be productive for years to come. I have always been pretty health conscious, but now I made a very mindful effort to cook more regularly at home and also um, still monitoring Henry's health and diet. His breakfast is now um, still a bowl of um, oats but with organic powder from green powders from um, vegetables as well as um, spices. Cured meat uh, and deep fried food is now a no-no. The deep fried food will be occasionally replaced by lightly pan fried or um, grilled food. Now we are also um, making a conscious effort to exercise. My perspective in life has changed um, dramatically as well. I realize even though we can take care, good care of our health, but there's still an unknown that is unpredictable and um, unchangeable by us. Now, I value every minute that I spend with my family and friends. 
I try to change myself for the better. I try not to judge others. And I'm very, very thankful for the One Heart Support Group during throughout the Henry's treatment. From them, I learned a lot, like how to take care of Henry and so forth. And because of their gracious help, now I try to reach out to others. Today, I'm also more prayerful and um, I'm really thankful for God. We've always been on my side. Yes, I might not be able to script my expiry date, but I certainly can alter my life destiny. Thank you, Anna, for that very meaningful sharing. It's uh, really tremendously heartwarming all that you have done for Henry. How you shared in the emotions, the ups and downs of his journey. You know, the love that you have showed him really speaks of your commitment to your marriage and to your family. At this point, I really want to acknowledge all the caregivers, family and friends of cancer patients that are listening in. Each of you play a tremendously important role in the physical and emotional recovery process of a head and neck cancer patient. Um, so as you know, the head and neck is a really compact and complex region. And that also means that the range of side effects from treatment can be very broad. During the course of treatment, there can be um, dryness of mouth, pain and difficulty swallowing, and uh, very often, this requires some kind of adjustment in diet, whether it's taking foods with a softer consistency, or even taking smaller and more frequent meals. Um, and of course, very importantly, keeping well hydrated. All of these may sound like very simple adjustments, but many of you know when it comes down to the nitty gritty details, to marketing, to deciding on the ingredients, and the preparation of food, it no longer becomes trivial, right? Sometimes it may mean uh, preparing two separate sets of meals for the family, lifestyle changes, and really many sacrifices from caregivers. In some cases, the treatment process may involve inserting a feeding tube or a tracheostomy tube into the neck of the patient to help with breathing. Um, in these situations, you know, actually the role of a caregiver becomes even more critical because many times the caregiver can be the first person to detect a problem with the tube or even the first person to realise that the patient is unwell. Um, as a doctor, in my practice, it's, it's always very heartwarming to see a cancer patient come in with his family or his loved ones. I really love that. For me, it's a great opportunity to get everyone onto the same page to be able to explain the diagnosis, look at the scans together, and also explain the current situation and what the treatment options are. I think uh, being all together in the same room really helps to unite the family towards a common understanding and goals for treatment. Um, I've seen patients come in pre-treatment, smiling, full of optimism and hope. And very often in the middle of treatment, you know, sometimes you don't see those big smiles anymore. But instead, it's being replaced by a sense of um, perseverance, you know, like trudging on in the middle of a marathon. Yet, it's during those same moments where I see um, really special moments like elderly couples holding hands. I see children with their arms around the shoulders of their parents just pressing on and pushing forward. As uh, Anna has shared, this journey is not only a journey for the cancer patient. As caregivers, family and loved ones, you are also going through your own journey and it's not an easy one. We'll all have our moments of doubt and fatigue, but surely there will also be moments of hope, peace and strength. I think it's really important for all of us to draw strength from those moments. Whether it's through your faith in God or through spending time with loved ones who can encourage you, 
just as the cancer patient leans into you as a pillar of support, you too need to lean in to someone as a source of strength. So thank you very much for all that you do.